Lights out. For a good book to relax with tonight? Well, you've come to the right place. We have thousands of them. There's one in particular, an old and strangely curious one. Come, I'll get it for you. Light out! Is it too late to take a book from the library? I know, sir. We won't be closing for another half hour. Mm, so you won't. I thought it was later. <laughs> well, it's these late fall afternoon, sir. You remember the library? Yes. For many years. My name's John Eldred. Well, I'll just have to check the register, if you don't mind. Not at all. You're new here, aren't you? I know, sir. I've been here five years. I see. Well, I don't get up to Boston very often, but I think the other attendant would have remembered me. Yes, I'm sure he would, sir. Yes, it's all right, Mr. Eldridge. You can go upstairs and get your book. I wonder if someone would be good enough to find it for me. <laughs> I've developed a heart condition since I was here last, and my doctor's forbidden stairs. And I have the name of the book all written out. Oh, of course. I'll go myself. I'll just be a minute. I think I remember seeing you before, Mr. Eldridge, though not quite recently. Uh, I live in Bretfield in the Berkshires. It's a year since I visited Boston. A year? Now, that's right. Let's see, it was just getting dark. I was going around turning all the lights on, and we nearly collided. Do you remember? Uh, I'm afraid not. It was on the stairs, halfway to the top floor. I was going up, and you were coming down suddenly, uh, running... I was probably running to catch my train. Oh, yes. So what book was that, Mr. Eldred? <clears throat> the information's all there. Tractate Medard, with the commentary of McManadies, Amsterdam, 1717-11334. Is that our catalog listing, uh, sir, 11-3-34? Yes. Why? Well, it's unfamiliar to me. No one's ever asked me for it in the five years I've been here. Not everyone is a scholar of Hebrew, young man. No, sir, I imagine not. Well, I'll get it for you, sir. Oh, uh, if this should be out, will you take another edition of the Talmud? No. Yes, sir. Take care of the desk, will you, Peter? Mr. Garrett will be as fast as possible, but the Hebrew collection is in the stacks on the top floor. Hi, Bill. Oh, hello, George. Hey, Harry. Uh, member downstairs wants to track tape me, dog. The what? Yes, I don't know it either, but it's in our catalog, so we've got it. It's a rare edition of the Talmud. Donated to us in 1931 by Dr. John Rant. Whoever he is. What have you been doing up here? Or checking the Greek collection for any volumes that need rebinding. Why? Well, you've raised an awful lot of dust. Well, I didn't do it. Who else is up here? Nobody. I'll see you later. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I never knew anyone was here. Excuse me, sir. I disappoint you, Mr. Eldred, but uh, one of our members got there ahead of you. You mean the book south? Well, yes. Uh, well, no, it's still there, but an old gentleman was reading it. So what I, old I, gentleman? A shortish old man, the retired schoolmaster type, you know. Yes, I know. If you wait ten minutes until the library closes. I'll... I can't wait. Well, Mr. Eldred, he'll have to come down then, and if he hasn't got the book, I'll no. go up and... I'm sorry, but my train. You have my address. Please send me the book when it's free. Good night. Go 
closing up, huh? Yeah, past five. Yeah. Well, I can leave too. I'm through. Oh, say, did uh, did an old gentleman take out the track tape meat off? No one came down. I guess he's still up there. I better go up and put him out. No, there's, there's nobody up there. I just shut up the lights myself. No, 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 let's go. No, I better check. All right, I'll wait for you then. Anybody here? Hello? Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir. I, I, I'm very sorry, but really... For nothing. Marriage. Shut. Back to an empty boarding house with no boarders till next summer, and by then the Boston Bank will have our house. And when I think that all these years we could have well, been rich. Don't think about it, dear. I don't anymore. Years ago, I put it right out of my head. If the Lord wanted me to have Uncle John Rand's fortune, he'd have let me find that will. If there Attention. was one, oh, if there Stanley is Rand, a man, please even a strange, the malicious, the unhappy man like your Uncle John Rand wouldn't tell lies on his deathbed. Oh, wouldn't he? No, he wouldn't. I was there with him. He really wanted to leave me his money. Then why didn't he write out a plain will and hand it to you? Why did he tell you you'd have to find it and then probably wouldn't recognize it if you did? Well, he wasn't a very kind man. <laughs> but now you know that when I went to nurse him through his last illness, he was grateful. And he was sorry that he hadn't helped me before. So somebody else got the money and lived in luxury for the 20 Vermont years. Are we now not... loading on track number oh, 11, never mind. leaving at 6.05 Eastern Standard Time for Cambridge, Ayer, Winchenden, Bellows Falls, Ludlow and Rutland. Oh, George. Hi, Bill. Come. Not at all. Missed it this past week. I missed you. Not that live, though. Guess we're going to have to miss you for two more weeks. Now, will you sport in the mountain there? Well, it's hardly the time of year for sporting, is it? Too early for skiing. You'll probably be the only visitor up there in the White Mountains. Probably. So, why don't you go to Vermont, Phil? Much prettier girls in Vermont. I've got a ticket for New Hampshire. Yeah, I know, but there's a train leaving for Vermont in five minutes. You could switch off, you could Look, get... George, I'm going out of town to take a rest because the doctor suggested it. I'm going to New Hampshire because the doctor suggested New Hampshire. All right. New Hampshire it is. But after what I just saw, I wish that ladder had fallen on me. You know why it fell. Well, you collided with it in the dark. George, I've told you, it wasn't dark. The lights were on, and I saw them. I saw that little old man, and he was horrible. That's when I... I backed away, and I hit the ladder. George, I tell you, his eyes... He didn't have real eyes. It was a spider and spider with him. You think it's a knock on my head, don't you? Hmm. Well, maybe it is. It's true. I, I don't remember why I went up there. But I remember him. I saw him. I saw him just as plainly as I see you now. Oh, now look, Bill. Look. If you saw him, why didn't I? I was standing at the bottom of the stairs when I heard you fall. I found you less than a minute later. Nobody passed me, and nobody was there. Believe me. I wish I could. You will when you feel better. Train number 302, the White Mountain Flyer, is now loading on track number 12. Now I guess you better. This train will go to Lowell, Nashua, Plymouth, Woodville, and Point Get a good North. rest. Thanks for coming. Good luck.
<laughs> you should. Now, Mary, stop teasing Bill. Or he'll be sorry that he ever met us on the train. I'll never be sorry for that, Mrs. Simpson. You've been so kind since that train. Nonsense. Well, you took me into your house. Oh, that was a terrible sacrifice for us, Mr. Garrett. What with the boarding house going begging for out-of-season boarders, we'd have taken in anybody at all. Wouldn't we, Mother? Oh, Mary, now don't pay any attention to her. You know how girls are. Well, I'm beginning to learn now, Mrs. Simpson. All my life I've been sort of quiet. And women have always known that the minute they laid eyes on me. No interest in you, huh? <laughs> well, of course, if they'd met you the way I did first. Dashing into a train all white and shaking as if the police were after you. And then collapsing against the seat. And this, mind you, at the last minute as the train was pulling out. They would have thought you were an escaped convict, too. Mary. And, of course, that would interest anyone in a romantic kind of way. And then you turn out to be a poor, nervous individual who's just getting over a frightful illness. And that would interest anyone in a, well, in a maternal kind of way. Mary, stop <laughs> that this minute. Oh, Mother, he likes it. <laughs> Besides, it doesn't good to be teased. Well, just look at him, Mother. <laughs> He's not the same man who came here a week ago. That's my cooking, not your tea. <laughs> oh, it's both, isn't it, Bill? Yes, it's both. There, you see, Mother? And it'll be all over in a week. I'll have to go back to Boston, that library. Library? Oh, you mean you work in a public library? Well, no, it's the Bookman's Library. Oh. Very uh, academic, stuffy. I never told you before because I thought you'd think I was stuffy. <laughs> Oh, poor old Bill. Do you hate it? No, as a matter of fact, I'm proud of it. To work in the Brooklyn, you have to be something of a scholar, you see. Mm -hmm. All my life, I've loved books, so... Oh, I haven't. A book cheated me out of my inheritance 20 years ago. Tell him about it, Mother. Oh, no, dear. Too long a story. Yes, but Bill might be able to help us. Bill, how could something be written in English that my mother, if she saw it, wouldn't know it was in English? You mean if they were deliberately trying to disguise the fact? Yes. Well, you could, uh, you could write English words in another alphabet, Hebrew, Arabic, as long as the fellow was a scholar and, uh, and... Well, and... he was a scholar. Mm -hmm. He used to have his own school for boys up at Bretfield Mass. Who? Well, this uncle of mother's, a Dr. John Rant, he was a horrible oh, nasty... Wait a minute, Mary. John Rant. I know that name. It means something. See, connected with the book, uh, schoolmaster. Oh, if only I could remember it. No, see what you've done, Bill's oh, all no. mm -hmm. Really, I must remember it. I've got to remember it. I feel that I've met your uncle quite recently. <laughs> well, that you couldn't have done, Bill. He's awfully dead. Dead? Uh -huh. 20 years ago, in October 1931. 1931, 1931, that's it. Uh, the tractate meet-off was donated to Dr., uh, to the Bookman's Library in 1931 by Dr. John Rand. The what was donated, Bill? The tractate meet-off. It's a very rare edition of the Talmud. Well, that's Hebrew. The Talmud's in Hebrew, isn't it? Yeah. But, Bill, for heaven's sake, was anything written in that book? Well, no, I never got my hands. Schoolmaster. You know what? Crazy. What? But if it wasn't, if it was true, what was written in that book, Mary? A will. In favor of your mother? Yes. A lot of money? A fortune. Twenty years ago, uh -huh. but your mother didn't inherit it. Who did? Well, a, a cousin of hers, an heir by a previous will. What was his name, Mary? Was it John Eldred? Oh! Yes. So John Eldred has been spending a fortune these last 20 years that rightfully belongs to your mother. Yes. And he knows that, doesn't he? Yes. It? And he also knows about a will and a book. Who told him? You, Mrs. Simpson? I had to. When my uncle died, my cousin came at once to claim the house at Redfield. So I had to ask him to let me search through the book. Instead of which, he locked up all the books and ordered mother out of the house. And that was the end of that. Because he must have discovered the book and, and the will and destroyed it. No. Oh, but he must have. Then why is he trying so hard to find a book in a Boston library? Well, you mean that Hebrew one, that track case something? Yes, Mary, the one that was donated to us 20 years ago. Only I don't know why it took Eldred so long to locate it. I do. He didn't know any more than mother which book the will was written in. 
So we had to search every book at Brestfield, page by page, and Mother says there were thousands of them. I never saw so many in all my life. Why, the catalog was as thick as... The catalog. The catalog, that's it. He found out what books were missing after his search failed through the catalog. Then he went to all the dealers, the libraries, until at last, a year ago, he finally found out what book it was and where it was. And he came for it a year ago? Yes. That's why I saw him running down the stairs. Well, then he, then he did find the will. He did destroy it. No, Mary. Not then and not two weeks ago either when he tried again. Both times he was driven away by a little old man. Oh, looked like a schoolmaster. Oh! Oh, no, Bill. Yes, Mary. And it's the same man that stopped me from getting on the New Hampshire train. So that I could come here, to you, to hear this story. Mrs. Simpson, I think your Uncle John Rapp does want you to have that fortune. And I think he wants me to help you to get it. Can I help you? Yeah. We weren't expecting you back for another week. Judge, well, I'm not really back. I'm here on an errand. I want to borrow a book. New Hampshire that dull? Well, matter of fact, I never got to New Hampshire. But that's but a long story. I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. I'll go upstairs now and get oh, the book. Hey, wait, 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 you're still an invalid now. Uh, let me get the book. Tell me the name of it and I'll get it for you. Well... Well, come on, tell me. Well, I suppose there'll be no trouble. It's a tractate me dog. It's for out. Out? Well, it can't be. Well, yeah, we, we sent it out by parcel post. When? Yesterday, the member wrote in and asked... Who? Who, who was it, Peter? Uh, John Eldred. Lives in Brexley. That's it. You mean you went upstairs and got the tractate meet us for Eldred? And no one stopped you? Well, who stopped me? Well, I... I don't know. I... I guess I'm wrong. Guess I'll have to go to Brettfield. Dawkins, has a package come for me? Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Eldred. Yes. I'll get it just as soon as the light up. Get it now, Mrs. Dawkins. The lights can wait, and I can't. It's a long way home from the village. And since I've had my bad heart, I shouldn't drive after dark. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, all right. And hurry, will you please? Yes, yes. Oh, here you are. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Good night. Turn on some lights. I don't know. Yeah. No, he's alive. Just had a bad shock, that's all. You better get a doctor. I'll take care of things here. You lost your home, haven't you? He's gone. Riley for the book. Writing. Hebrew words, but they aren't really Hebrew words. They're English words. When I got back to Boston last night, I took it to an expert in the language, and he read it to me last night in the presence of a lawyer, and it's a perfectly valid will, leaving everything to your mother. Oh, wait till Mother hears this. She's rich. Yes, she is. So are you, Mary. Oh, of course I am. Aren't you glad? Yes, I'm glad, Mary. But, no, you're not, Bill, and I don't understand what... Oh. Uh, Bill, do you mean you'd stop liking a girl if she, uh, well, if she suddenly had money? Well, I couldn't very well stop liking her, could I? But, and I couldn't very well ask her to marry me either, could I? <laughs> well, uh, I, I think you could. Oh, darn Dr. Joseph Brandt. Look what he's done now. Mary. 
<laughs> Mary, will you marry me? Oh, yes, Bill. When? The sooner the better, before he tries to put this right, too. He's made amends to your mother, so let's let him rest in peace. NBC Television. 